In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hands. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil i now surrender you are breaking new ground you are breaking new ground so make me your vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be god i came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. And the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Because where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine 
out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me.
us remotely via Zoom or Facebook. We are just so glad that you're with us. And so just a quick note before we begin our service for those of you who are joining us uh, remotely. Uh, during our praise and worship set, we just invite you to go gather something that represents for you the body and the blood of Christ Jesus. And when we consecrate the communion elements here, yours will be consecrated as well, and you'll be able to participate in communion with us. So with that, let us go ahead and have our opening song, which is? He has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad, and indeed, he has made us glad, has he not? So I just invite you to join with Meg as she leads us in singing that, and we light our altar candles, and we will begin worship. So thank you all for joining us. All right, happy to be back. I've been gone for about a month between vacations and strength for the journey camp and everything else. I see we have a couple people in the audience from the strength for the journey camp, a couple of my friends that I met up there and stuff. So happy to see them tonight. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to sing this song about uh, entering God's gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. <laughs> changing us so that we might provide wonderful, luscious, satisfying fruit to those in you. And so we just pray right now that this entire worship service would be pleasing unto you, that it would glorify and honor your holy name, and that all that would be said and done tonight would be in your blessing. We thank you for it. Amen. And so I believe that that might bring us to 
Oh, yes, there's my flashing red sign. And so, of course, the first one is uh, duffel bags for the Youth Crisis Center. Uh, we will be, uh, next week I'll be more over, and maybe next week or the week after, we do have some chocolates that are going to be finding their way there. I know. Well, they will. I can always pick them up on Saturday. If I need to. I'll make the trip out. And so we have that ongoing because, um, as it says, you know, the kids arrive at the Youth Crisis Center with their belongings in a black plastic bag. And a lot of times they leave with their belongings in a black plastic bag. And so uh, we have made a commitment to help provide duffel bags for them with permanent name tags so that when the kids leave there, they can leave with respect. And that's what's truly important for the respect that they need. And to not have to carry this into the black track bag. And so what do we have next, Chris? Oh, birthday. So let's see, Friday was the 12th. So coming up next week on the 20th, which is actually midweek, right? Yeah. Um, Tom and Stephen have an anniversary. And then coming up on the 22nd, uh, Jody has a birthday. And let's see, today's the 14th to the 21st. Yeah, so the rest of those will be next week. And so on three, let's just wish a happy anniversary to Tom and Steve. One, two, three. Happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. All right. And then up next is, so for the fall, we're planning on doing something for the Youth Crisis Center, whether that's, they ask for some interior decorations because they're really hoping that they can send the kids out trick or treating. So, but if not, Maybe that five pound bag of chocolate will go a long way towards the uh, Halloween, I don't know. But we're also thinking maybe of being able to do some kind of like face mask or something. We've been looking at those and we haven't made a decision yet. So if there's anything there that you would like to help with, please bring those in and we will make sure that they get to the Youth Crisis Center well in advance of Halloween so that kids have time to decorate face masks if that's what they get or to put up some interior decorations so that they can make the house look all festive in Halloween. <laughs> so, uh, and so now uh, we're going to go ahead and mute the video camera and the microphone because this is a video of some of the events from Strength for the Journey Camp this past week.
and we're trying to get to our budget of 4,500. Um, if you would like to make a donation, we have several ways that you can do that. Uh, of course, if you're here in person, you can um, fill them with a little white thing, which, or you can tell us at 714-662-6972. You can go to our website, rbmcc.org, and you can click on the donate button and you can donate right there. Or if you're old school, I, I'm partially old school. I still write one check a month. <laughs> write a check to Resurrection Beach MCC and drop it in the mail to us at 11037 Warner, uh, number 130 Warner Avenue in Fountain Valley, California, 92708. So I'm going to hand this off. And then um, while that is being uh, handed off and distributed, that brings us to our time for praise and worship. And so Megan's going to come up and lead us in several songs. So. All righty. Well, we're going to start off with a kind of a relatively new song that's been out on a Christian radio station. We've kind of been here before called God So Love. Thank you. 
actually, it's like it came out. It was in the 70s. I don't know. I think I first heard it like in the early, well, the mid 90s when I was in. The gym. But I may have come out, crawled out from underneath the rock. I don't know. <laughs> That is called as the deer, and I've kind of modernized it because it, originally it says my soul longeth after you, the, and we don't really talk old English anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and just got three nuts that I've heard, so I kind of put in you instead of the. Right. And, and I didn't get a chance of the. And so. It, so when you see the, I'm going to be saying you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the deer pants for the water, so long after you, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You are the my strength, my shield. You are the my spirit in You are the my heart's desire and I long to worship you. I want you more than a silver only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of the heart. You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than the other so much more than me. You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone make my spirit you are the my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You are the my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Actually, Chris and I went to see a magnificent guitarist last night, which was Catino de Agostino, who's from Italy, and uh, he can do amazing things on the guitar. So I was empowered to do finger picking on that last <laughs> number. <laughs> I'm not as good as him. <laughs> but uh, after hearing him, it's like, well, he can do all that. I can finger pick that song. <laughs> well, it sounded wonderful. Okay, well, that's good. Well, this next song, I really like this next song. You know, it talks about our God. God has, you know, many different names. You know, he's our he's our provider. He's our healer. You know, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh is one of his names. And that's Jehovah Jireh means that he is our, our provider, the one who will provide. And so, you know, I've always found in my life, no matter how many difficult things that I've gone through, God has always seen me through those things and he's always provided for all of my needs. Like David said in the song, he said, 
I have never seen the righteous of God going hungry in the streets. You know, God always provides for our needs. And so I love the song of Jaira, you are enough. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I was holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. Love and take a trophy to make you cry. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm. But I won't go down. Hear your voice. Marriage is the rhythm of a wind. Call me out. You would cross an ocean. So I wouldn't try. I've never been so sure that you are right now. You are God. You are God.
Psalm 80, 1 through 2, and 8 through 19. New Living Translation. Number one, please listen, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph's descendants like a flock. O God, enthroned above the cherubim, display your radiant glory to Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Show us your mighty power. Come to rescue us. You brought us from Egypt like a grapevine. You drove us away, the pagan nations, transplanted us into your land. You cleared the ground for us, and we took root and filled the land. Our shade covered the mountains. Our branches covered the mighty cedars. We spread our branches west to the Mediterranean Sea. Our shoots spread east to the Euphrates River. But now... Why have you broken down our walls so that all who pass by may steal our fruit? The wild boar from the forest devours it, and the wild animals feed on it. Come back, we beg you, O God of heaven's armies. Look down from heaven and see our plight. Take care of this grapevine that you yourself have planted. This son, child, you have raised for yourself, for we are chopped up and burned by our enemies. May they perish at the sight of your frown. Strengthen the man you love, the son of your choice. Then we will never abandon you again. Revive us so we can call on your name once more. Turn us again to yourself, O Lord God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. Amen. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. Amen. Amen. And so then our second reading for tonight is from Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, and Carl will be reading that for us. Looking for a crop of justice. I'll sing a ballad to the one I love, a love ballad of his vineyard. The one I love, a vineyard, a fine, well-placed vineyard. He holds the soil, holds the weeds, and finds the very best vines. He built a lookout, built a wine press, a vineyard to be proud of. He looked for a vintage yield of grapes, but for all the things he got, garbage, grapes. Now listen to what I'm telling you, you who live in Jerusalem and Judah. What do you think is going on between me and my vineyard? Can you think of anything I could have done to my vineyard that I didn't do? When I expected good grapes, why did I get bitter grapes? Well, now let me tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. I'll tear down its fence and let it go to ruin. I'll knock down the gate and let it be trampled. I'll turn it into a patch of weeds, untended, uncared for. Thistles and thorns will take over. I'll give orders to the clouds. Don't rain on that vineyard ever. You get it? The vineyard of God of the angel armies is the country of Israel. All of the men and women of Judah are the garden he was so proud of. He looked for a crop of justice and saw them murdering each other. He looked for a harvest of righteousness and heard only the moans of victims. Uh, and so, um, can we go ahead, Chris, and bring up the... Uh, Service slide. There we go. Thank you. And so, as we prepare for the message, let's take just a moment to go to God in prayer. So, Holy God, we just ask that you would send your holy anointing spirit to fall afresh on us, just as the dew falls afresh each morning on the grass, and just as you sent the man. 
pray, dear God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts collectively is pleasing to you. So, uh, as you've heard, today's message is based on Psalm 80, uh, verses 1 through 2, and then 8 through 19, and then Isaiah 5, verses 1 through 7. And so, both of these passages speak to us of God's vineyard, of Hades. Both of these scriptures reference grapes, grapevine, vineyard, and differing types of grapes. You heard where Carl read it about garbage grapes, right? Well, garbage grapes, sour grapes, wild grapes, they're all kind of in that same family. You know, growing up on the farm, we had some wild grapevines that were entangled in some crab apple trees down in one of the pastures. Well, I tried eating some of those grapes one day. Let me tell you, it was not fun. Talk about some major pucker power. <laughs> they were bitter and they had no juice, nothing in them of a saving grace at all. So no wonder the birds avoided them. Uh, they were not tasty. But so Psalm 80 was written as a prayer of deliverance from a national enemy, and it was a, a lament over the northern kingdom. The writer was from the southern kingdom in Judah. And you know, and it speaks of God having a smile. But yet they question why God was so angry with them. Well, clearly, when you read further into the scripture, God was not angry with them. God was sorely disappointed in them. And so, um, like in verse eight, you know, when it first so verses one and two talk about. What a wonderful God God is and how he brought God's people out of Egypt and that they were a vine and he planted them and all that. Then all of a sudden, it switches from God to, hey, it's all about me. Because in the scripture, it says, well, and so our shadow covered the mountains and our branches covered the cedars of Lebanon and our roots went from the Euphrates to the other river and oh, it was all about me. They don't grasp, either they choose not to recognize it, or they're just so caught up in their own lives and their own thinking and their own selves that they don't recognize that they are not seeing it as God doing something through them, but they're seeing it as doing it all themselves. And how often do we sometimes fall into that same trap? You know, where we'll work on something and perhaps somebody tells us what a wonderful job we did. Then it goes right straight to our head, doesn't it? And then the next thing you know, we're thinking we're all that in a bag of chips, an old thing to himself. And we don't need God, but we do. And you know, throughout this passage, it's talking about their their people. And God just wants them to understand it's not about them. And you know, and then when it gets down towards the end, I think it is in verse 19, uh, the, the, the psalmist changes from being concerned about the northern kingdom to being concerned about the southern kingdom because that's what he is. And so he doesn't want anything to happen to his kingdom. But the thing that really interests me about this passage is where uh, the, the writer, the psalmist, is saying, uh, asking God to come and seek them. God doesn't come to seek us. We should be seeking them. And so here again, they're kind of like, well, I'm just going to stand here and wait for God to come back. And by the way, God, if you come back to me, then we won't abandon you again. That's bargaining. And the last I knew, God did not have a union. So God didn't need bargaining power. <laughs> and it doesn't work with God anyway. So here they are trying to get God to come back to them when they made the mistakes and they're not owning the mistakes. And then they want to bargain with God. Talk about a trifecta of errors. So, and so then all of this kind of reminds me of 
sour grape. Or as it says in Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, garbage grapes. And so I would like you to notice here, see this mess? Um, you may not be able to see it. I should have brought both in from morning service. But anyway, so here is a massive mess of grapevine and a whole bunch of tiny, teeny, bitter little grapes. This is what we cause. It's called chaos. When we start thinking about ourselves only. Now over here, on the other side, you'll notice that we have beautiful, rich, green leaves. There isn't a bunch of junk going on over here. There isn't any chaos. And they're big, voluptuous, satisfying great. Mm. This is the hand of God. This is our hand, unless we recognize that God is in control. So this passage in Isaiah speaks to when we're trying to be in control, what we generate and what we produce is not good fruit. It's got about as much fucker power to it as what the church lady used to have when uh, she was on, was that Rowan and Martin's lap? Saturday Night Live, thank you. So I remember, and she was my, I, oh, I loved the church lady. She had those red shoes on, remember? And so there was one time she was doing a, a skit with Jello. <gasps> Could it be red? I love that one. So, but I digress. So, this is us without God. This is us. And that's all God wants for us. God wants us to be those beautiful, wonderful, satisfying grapes that he created. So all we have to do is be ready to let God do some food. Because there's a whole bunch of sucker branches in here. And we all have sucker branches in our lives, don't we? The things, it might be people, it might be something else, but it's whatever keeps us from focusing on God. And so that takes away our energy. It takes away our focus. And we end up being a whole bunch of puny little bitter grapes. When in actuality, all we have to do is say, God, take the wheel. Or as Sarah used to say, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> all we have to do is let God be in control, cool us down, and allow us to be what God has called us. And so, you know, I just, this is really who we are, isn't it? That even in those moments when we kind of feel like we're in control, we need to remember this thing. Because if we're in control, we are creating chaos. And chaos creates sucker branches, which diminishes what we can do. And it's not what God wants us. So I just hope and pray that each one of us, as we go forward through this week, that we will ask God to do some serious pruning. Take away those things that keep us from focusing on God and being open to God's thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so that brings us to our family prayer time. You can keep your sweater on if you want. Oh, well. <laughs> well, we've had an eventful week, I think. At least I have. I had eye surgery and it's done and it's good. And so we have uh, some other uh, first prayer requests which turned into praises. We've been praying for the baby walker who's been in and out of the hospital with mm -hmm. intestinal issues. And uh, she's now strong enough and big enough to be able to go home. So that she was so tiny and so sick. So that's that. And let's see what else has gone on. Well, Cassie had her surgery, right. and so she's, she's recovering. recovering. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt, I see in Facebook, asked for prayer for he and his father and his brother. 
couple has mentioned a friend and fortunate, a family member who is beginning with Alzheimer's or surgery or problems that they can't talk about. All of these things, we just leave these things with you and ask that you would do the things that you do best because we don't know the answer, but you certainly do. So we ask that you would be with each person. And I ask that you would touch the people who have raised their hand in a silent request. Be with them, love them, touch them, touch them with your grace. In Jesus' holy name. And so as we begin to prepare for communion, maybe it's going to come and lead us in a song and then we will have our communion. Resurrection Beach MCC is at every MCC throughout the world. As it's Christ on our table, we simply have the honor and the privilege of being able to show. And as such, there are no man made human limitations placed on coming to come to see. It is open to all. And so, at every service, we remember the event that took place that night in the upper room. When Jesus was gathered there with his disciples, his family of choice, the people that he had spent those approximate three years in need. And after he washed the feet of those gathered there to remind those present that being a master is quite And so, after he had done that and returned to the table, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of onion. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it. And he said to those gathered there that this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you eat of this bread. And he passed it among them and it was free. And then he reached into the center of the table and he picked up. Do you believe it to be the cup of the lunch? The cup that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. He raised it toward heaven, blessed it, gave thanks for it, and then breathed into it with a very heavy breath that God had given to This cup 
represents the new covenant. And it represents my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of sins. And ever we drink of this cup, we offer the covenant. So we will be listening to the question. So I'm just going to pass these out and then we will hear a subscription. So, I invite us now to take and open the bottle and receive the wafer that's in there as the body of Christ Jesus. Let's receive it now. And then, if you turn it over, you'll be able to get the drink. I invite you now to receive Holy and loving God, we thank you so much for the gift of your son, for his willingness to be the sacrificial lamb, the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. So we just pray right now, Holy God, that with each time that we receive communion, that we will be strengthened yet again, that we will be moved yet again to be the good grace that you have called us to be. That we will be all that we are supposed to be, disciples of Christ. With that, we will have our book The prayer is that we will go out with joy, spread the joy around to everyone you meet. Yes. <laughs>
We just call on your name right now that we would anoint each person who's going to have anything to do with the food that we are going to receive this week. From the farm workers all the way through to the home cook. Keep them safe. Allow them to return to their families each night whole and without incident, without accident, and that they would be compensated for you. And we pray also, Holy God, that you would anoint the food itself that we are going to receive, that it would nourish our body, that it would give us strength, and that it would allow us to to be those beautiful, luscious grapes that you have called us to be, that we might go forward and be the care of them. And so, you know, it, it wouldn't be a service unless I drew all of our folks who are joining us <laughs> remotely that kiss. And now y'all laugh, but remember at the end of the general conference virtual video, we were doing that way before they were. So kind of pretend like you're on the dating game. I think that was the show that it was, wasn't it? The dating game? Yeah. So on three, everybody blow a kiss, even though you're not on camera, but that way the folks at home will know that you're all participating, okay? So I'm going to bid you all a very fond ado until next week. And so God bless you and love you. Uh -huh.